Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargard.com. In this video, we are going to look at the sum product function of Excel. Now, this function is a hidden gem. It's a really powerful analytical function where a lot of people are just not aware of what this function is capable of. And I'm going to run through some examples of this function right now, uh, beginning with its classic form. Now, the sum product, the function, as its name suggests, is meant to sum the product of multiple arrays. So in this first example, I have the price of products and a quantity of products, and I want the overall total. And yes, you know, I could write formulas somewhere to multiply the price by quantity, to find out the individual prices of these, and you might want that. Now, I can find out what all they are, I can see in the bottom right hand corner that the overall total is 24.25. Just so that's in the bottom right hand corner there, if you add up the four values after. And that's what some products going to do all in one formula. Find the products, multiply price by quantity for each one, then sum them. So if I delete those for a moment and start up the sum product function equals sum product it will start asking me for different arrays, one or more arrays. I'm going to provide the first array as the range of cells with prices in, put in the comma, and then select the range of cells with quantities in. Close bracket and enter, and I have that 24, 25, all within one formula. And that is the classic use of some product. It's why it has its name and what its initial intentions were. And that's great, but Excel users have taken it far beyond its initial design. So if I pop to the next sheet of my complex formula sheet, I wanted to try and show off a couple of examples of here or in here. Now I use some products quite heavily when I have complex work to do, uh, and if anyone watching this video has has taken or uh, my sports league tables course, or have seen any of the stuff I do around there, you'll know that I use some product a lot there. Well, there's a lot of statistical calculations, uh, they're quite intense, quite a lot of logic, and I find some products so much easier than other approaches. So, using this example, what I have here, I want to know how many orders in uh, South America uh, taken by this salesperson uh, known as Charlotte Harris. So I can see that there's one there, Brazil and Charlotte. Uh, there's one here, Venezuela and Charlotte. And uh, another one somewhere, which I am struggling to find. There it is, Venezuela and Charlotte again. God, that was difficult. I knew there was three. Let's get our sum product to do that. So we have three conditions. It must be Brazil or Venezuela and Charlotte Harris. Those three conditions are a mixture of OR and AND logic within the formula. Let's see if we can do it. Let's me zoom in. It's easier to see on the video. Equals SUM PRODUCT. Now, for this first array, I'm going to open up a, a parenthesis, a bracket. And I'm going to select the range of countries, a B2 down to B16, whatever that may be. And I might make that absolute. And I'm going to test if that is equal to Brazil. So I'll write Brazil in the inverted commas there because it's a piece of text. And then a close bracket. And I'm going to introduce the plus sign, which we can kind of think of as the or logic when using some product in the way it's going to be used here. We'll open up another set of brackets. And I'll perform a similar condition to see if it's Venezuela. So I'll select the countries, make it absolute, and ask if it's equal to Venezuela. I'm going to run out of room here, aren't I? A closing bracket. So that's the all logic done. Is it Brazil or is it Venezuela? Uh, using arrays, kind of stuff you can't really get out of if functions. You can't use arrays like that in its classic form. Now I'm going to set another set of brackets around what I've just done because I want it to do that conditional element before the next bit. 
So I will use brackets to you know, stipulate the order of calculation. I'll then uh, put in a multiply sign, my asterisk, and an opening set of brackets again for the next criteria. And I want to know if the list of salespeople, uh, couple short there, C2 to C16, is equal to the contents of F3. Um, where in this scenario I'm referencing a cell that currently has Charlotte Harris written inside it. Close bracket. And that should be job done. I'll put another close bracket for some product. See it appear in black. So colouring needs to try and help me uh, trace myself through the formula. And if I press enter, I have an answer of three, which we know to be correct because in these 15 um, like cells, uh, we looked at that to before we got going with some product. So that's kind of uh, an alternative to things like countifs and uh, and like decount and aggregate and some of these other functions that can perform this kind of work. It's an alternative and in some ways probably a preference. Uh, the way I mixed up the OR and the AND logic there was quite clever. It's the kind of thing that some other functions are just not capable of uh, on their own by design, like count ifs. But it's also easily tweaked for other types of uh, aggregate. For example, I could select that cell and copy it over, which is why I was making the references absolute. I knew I was going to do that. Double click in G3 to have a look at the formula I've got in there. And what I'm going to do on the end here is add another multiplier and I'm going to multiply it by the sales totals. And the reason I'm doing this is to convert that into a sum. So I'm multiplying it by those figures, those totals. I'm now going to get a sum off the back of it. I I'll, I'll, should make it absolute, I guess, but I'll leave it as it is. Press enter. Maybe quickly apply some formatting so it looks better. And now I have a total sales of just shy of £2,000. So I can easily switch it from a count to a sum. So some product brilliant for the summing and counting variations. Not so good at others. You know, if you want your median, your, your mean averages, your standard deviations, then maybe you want pivot tables or, or another technique. But some product is a really, really powerful formula. Great for these kind of intense calculations. That's how I, I personally have used them a lot in my sports league tables work, uh, of which I have a course on. And you may find your benefits to them too. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of the other videos we have on our YouTube channel uh, or us at computergaga.com.